Welcome to Recycled EV Content, demystifying the complex world of battery recycling, breaking down the technical so you don't have to. I'm Scott, and I'm so glad you're here. Join me today as we explain the difference between pyrometallurgical recycling and hydrometallurgical recycling. Before we jump into today's content, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to this channel and hit that like button. If you find this or any of my other content valuable and you learn something, please consider sharing it with someone else as well. And lastly, I would love it if you would like to support this channel through Patreon. So before we get into the nuances of each of the two recycling methods, we need to first understand what they are and how they actually operate. So at a high level, pyrometallurgical recycling involves high heat, which would usually be a smelter, and on the flip side, hydrometallurgical recycling process typically utilizes a chemical solution. On the pyrometallurgical side, recyclers typically receive their material and they would typically shred that material and once it's shredded that material enters into a smelter and then some of the recovery of, of the critical metals takes place. However, that's a key point because some of the materials are a little bit more delicate and they're actually lost through the pyrometallurgical process, mainly the lithium. Some of it is reco recovered, but there are losses in that pyrometallurgical process. Overall, the recoveries in the pyrometallurgical recycling space aren't very high, which is why they typically use a hyd hydrometallurgical process after the smelting. The pyro process has been around for quite some time and they have it dialed in pretty well. But that being said, the recovery rates aren't nearly as high as straight up hydrometallurgical recycling. And also not forgetting the fact that there is an environmental impact on operating these smelting furnaces. But on an industry level, we do need to consider that pyrometallurgical recycling does in fact recover those critical metals. However, there are better processes out there and those better processes recover higher rates of all those critical metals. That's the lithium, the nickel, the manganese, and the cobalt. Now, if we talk about hydrometallurgical recycling, this is where things get a little bit more exciting Within this space, some of these recyclers are actually claiming rates over 99% in recoveries and purities. That being said, not all hydrometallurgical recycling processes are created equal. The baseline for these processes, the recovery rates are in fact a lot higher than pyrometallurgical recycling. However, some of these processes still require a high chemical consumption. So it's not always a perfect solution, but with the amount of companies working on the problem today, we're seeing massive growth in the space and the companies looking to partner with each other to find the optimal solution to this growing problem. As the goal of this channel is to really focus on the up and coming exciting parts of the industry, I wanna spend a bit more time discussing the hydrometallurgical process instead of going into great detail of the pyrometallurgical process. Some of the existing companies currently using the pyro process, you may have heard of Redwood Materials and another company called Umicore. I know there's others, but these are the two that are worth watching as they continue to develop new ways to tackle this uh, ongoing problem. I do want to make it known that I'm not a financial advisor and don't take any advice from me regarding any financial decision. Now that we've got that out of the way, uh, let's look back towards the hydrometallurgical process. So there are quite a few players, but a few that have published details within their investor slide decks on their processes. The few are Lycycle, we've got Nano One, American Battery Technology Company, Ascend Minerals, and American Manganese. In the next episode, I will do a quick breakdown on these active players in the lithium ion battery recycling space and where each company is at in their process. Some of these companies are building commercial, build, uh, commercial buildings to house their plants and others are working on their smaller uh, pilot scale plants. Some of these companies also have deals with OEMs and others are going it solo or haven't yet announced who they're partnering with. And the market is still quite large and there's room for a lot of these recyclers in this space. And I expect most of these companies will be here for many more years and likely multiple contracts for each of them. But not to get too sidetracked today, I'll finish up talking a bit more on the hydrometallurgical recyclers. There are three companies I'd like to discuss today at a high level, as not all companies have information readily available about their process. Without getting into the minute details, I'll stick to the process names and I'll do a deeper dive in, a f in future content. But each of these companies has a unique name for their hydrometallurgical process. Nano One provides what they call the one-pot process. 
Ascend Elements has what they call the hydro to cathode process. And American Manganese has a process called Recyclico. There are other companies out there that are working on hydrometallurgical processes. However, details are not as readily available to, to the public regarding these processes. I'll add links to each investor slide deck in the description for those that want to look at any of the companies that I've mentioned previously. But if we zoom out a little bit and look at a high level on the hydrometallurgical process, essentially the material is ground up, then mixed with a chemical, and then leached or uh, leached to extract the materials. Again, each company is going to come up with their own unique way of making this chemical reaction work, but essentially it's through multiple filtration and leaching steps to pull out the isolated or combination of these specific materials to provide the end result, those battery materials. Now, some companies provide battery metal salts and then other companies provide precursor cathode active material. Please check out my previous content if you have any questions regarding that aspect. However, both of these are needed in the recycling space, but companies that are producing precursor cathode active materials, they're eliminating one step for the end user at the battery manufacturing facility. As I talked about in my last episode, those precursor cathode active materials then have to be mixed with lithium to create the cathode active materials. And some of these hydrometallurgical recyclers are also producing the same high purity lithium required to create those cathode active materials. Having two streams being the lithium and the other bearing the nickel, the manganese and the cobalt, and that really allows those companies to become a one-stop shop. Lastly of note is not all lithium nickel, manganese, or cobalt is fully recovered by all the hydrometallurgical rec recyclers. So if you're looking into a company, ensure that they can recycle all the critical materials and not just some of them. So I really hope this gave you a high level view on the differences between pyrometallurgical and hydrometallurgical processing and the extreme advantage that the hydrometallurgical process has over smelting through the pyrometallurgical process. If you enjoyed this content, please go ahead and click that like button as well as subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And please also consider sharing it with your friends. And if you'd like to see this channel grow, please consider supporting me through Patreon. Bye for now.